and uh, now we're going to interview to the uh, interview the state's budget director. Lee Roberts took over as budget director in the McCrory administration, I believe, uh, late last year. Is that right, Mr. Budget Director? It was Labor Day last year, yes. Yeah. Good morning, Henry. How are How you? Are you? <laughs> Lee Roberts on the telephone with us live from Raleigh this morning. And, uh, in the, in, of course, if you don't know what the state budget director does, he's one of the top advisors to the governor. And um, he uh, is pretty much in control of the money for the state. I shouldn't say in control because you don't get to decide how it's all spent. But you have a, a, a hand in that. And when the governor's budget is put together, you're certainly the uh, key player in that. And uh, you're probably one of the key players right now in negotiating, trying to get a budget with the legislature. Is that accurate? Well, that's right. We're working on it. As you know, our fiscal year ended at the end of June, so we're operating under what they call a continuing resolution, which goes out until August 14th. And, you know, our legislature is one of only five state legislatures in the country that hasn't finished its budget work. Uh, those other four states have significant economic problems, and we've got a surplus here in North Carolina. So we think it's time for the legislature to, to wrap up its work, do the do the work that people sent them here to do, finish the budget, and uh, and, and, and give people some certainty and predictability for the next, next fiscal year. You know, we had Representative Brian Brown in the studio with us on uh, Monday morning who represents uh, Pitt County District 9 in the House of Representatives, and it's pretty clear that some of the rank-and-file members of the uh, General Assembly are pretty frustrated about this, too. Uh, he, he was uh, frustrated that, you know, the, the conference committees have been uh, appointed, although, you know, uh, unprecedented large number of people and i don't know if that's really going to work but or how it's, they're planning to make it work but he's saying you know here we are in the fourth week of july and nothing's really happening on the budget uh and so uh, you kind of wonder when they're going to get down to it i guess uh, they've got to do it sooner or later right <laughs> they do have to do it sooner or later hopefully before august 14th and i think there is some activity there's time to to get it done before the 14th but uh, it, it requires working hard between now and then. The uh, the good news is is that North Carolina, uh, the tax cuts and the um, and the budgeting that you've done, uh, it's in state government has worked and worked really well. Four hundred and forty five million dollars. That number is a little bit even more than we thought. We kept hearing four hundred million dollar surplus when the number actually was released earlier this week. Uh, we found out that North Carolina has $445 million additional dollars uh, to uh, what was budgeted last year. And uh, so now the question, uh, uh, Mr. Budget Director, is uh, what do we do with that money? What, what do you think the state should do with this extra money? Well, first of all, I think it, it, it is important to recognize the fact of the surplus. So it's really a testament to the comprehensive tax reform that was passed in the last session signed by the governor corporate income tax rates and personal income tax rates reduced to the lowest level since the 1930s in north carolina uh, one of the most comprehensive tax reform packages passed anywhere in the country in the last twenty years and a lot of doom and gloom from from a lot of folks saying that this would destroy tax revenues and and starve state government and instead we end up with a four hundred and forty five million dollar surplus so that's very good news for all citizens uh, uh, across the state it's important to be prudent with that surplus though we don't want to go out and spend it all we don't know if we'll have it next year and and even if we did it's probably best to make sure that you're not spending every last dime that that you bring in so the governor said that he wants to make sure that we shore up our reserves right now we're at around three percent would like to get to six percent you know, we recommend that counties and local governments keep 8%. So we should follow our own advice and, and get our reserves back up to the, to the level that they were before the recession. Governors talked about targeted pay increases for, for state employees. But the, the important thing is, is not to spend every dollar of the surplus. Lee Roberts, the uh, budget director for the state of North Carolina and uh, Governor McCrory's administration on the telephone with us. First time we've ever had Lee on. I got to know you, Lee, uh, earlier this year and have enjoyed uh, learning ab about your background. I know you and I have a lot of mutual friends from your days working with uh, Steve Jones and the guys at uh, Yadkin Bank. And uh, I guess it was Vantage South when you were there, but now it's Yadkin Bank. 
That's but right. but I will have to say this: you predicted, uh, uh, you mentioned gloom and doom earlier this year. We heard people like Chris Fitzsimon and other people say, you know, um, this this uh, tax reform stuff is going to be uh, awful. It's not working, and the state's going to end up in a big financial bind at the end of the year because um, this just isn't working. I remember you saying. Earlier this year, I heard you speak uh, earlier this year, and you said it's too early to tell. People are making predictions that they don't really know what they're talking about. We have to wait for the collections to come in. We have to wait for the tax returns to be filed in April. And then you you said in, in a, a meeting that I was uh, in probably around February, uh, you know, I think people are going to be surprised. I think we're going to end up with a good surplus, and you were right. Well, that's right. You don't really know what – tax revenues are going to look like, particularly after a big change in tax policy like we had, until individuals and businesses begin filing their returns in February, March, April. So when back in the fall people were were looking at monthly revenue data and making predictions for the full fiscal year, uh, that's just too early to, to make predictions. And there was probably a little bit of wishful thinking there from folks who were opposed to tax reform in the first place uh, didn't think the tax burden on North Carolina's families was was too high wanted to keep it in place uh, hoping that that would pay a price for that down the road but the the governor and the General Assembly thought taxes on on North Carolina's families were too high pushed through a comprehensive tax reform program that's still taking effect tax rates will will decline even further in the next fiscal year, and that's that's a good thing for North Carolina's families. Lee Roberts, State Budget Director on the telephone. Uh, Lee, I wanted to ask you, one of the hot topics um, in Raleigh right now is sales tax redistribution. Senator Harry Brown from down here in eastern North Carolina in Onslow County, uh, chair of the Senate Finance Committee, he, he thinks that some of the poorer counties in the state are getting the short end of the stick uh, in favor of the larger municipalities like Charlotte, Greensboro, Raleigh, and and even in some cases maybe Jacksonville and uh, and Greenville to a lesser degree, uh, there are a lot of poor counties in eastern North Carolina that are struggling to uh, to make their county budgets and and those kind of things and pay for schools and these kind of things. Uh, what's your position on the idea of changing the way? that uh, sales tax redistribution is done to help the poorer counties. Is that a bad idea or a good idea? Is Harry Brown onto something here, or is he barking up the wrong tree? Well, it's a bad idea for for at least three reasons, Henry, and I think the governor's been very clear about this, even to the point of threatening to veto the entire budget if this kind of sales tax redistribution is included. So there's no question that we have some less populated counties that are struggling, and they need help. And that's why the governor has proposed his comprehensive NC Competes job creation package. It's why we've proposed the the Connect NC bond initiative, which would mean spending for new infrastructure projects across the state. But the, the sales tax proposal that Senator Brown has put forward, it raises taxes, which is, is not the right answer in almost any situation. We're not going to tax our way to prosperity in some of these less populated counties. It's redistribution, which doesn't have a real good history any time it's been tried really anywhere in the world in the last hundred years. And it's taking away local control. So people in Raleigh spend a lot of time complaining about Washington. Washington doesn't know our problems. We're better placed here in North Carolina to decide what's best for for North Carolina's voters. Well, the same thing goes for, for Raleigh and the rest of the state. But Senator Brown bill would do is to impose a one-size-fits-all solution from Raleigh. We think folks in Pitt County and Martin County and everywhere else in North Carolina are better placed to decide their own tax levels. You mentioned Connect NC. That's the governor's uh, bond proposal, uh, up, upwards of about $3 billion, 2.8, something like that, for infrastructure needs in the state of North Carolina and transportation needs. You and I have talked about this before. You know, interestingly, the Secretary of Transportation, Tony Tata, abruptly resigned yesterday, and that's been the topic of conversation about what his future plans are. But how does that uh, – is that going to affect this, uh, uh, this, this, this effort to try to get this done? You know, the legislature, uh, the, the state Senate has – you know, they, they continue to be cool to the idea of a large – 
uh, bond package. Uh, is any progress being made, and where do you see this going, particularly now in light of the fact that uh, the Transportation uh, Secretary has resigned? Is that going to hurt the effort at all? I, I don't think it will. You hate to lose somebody of, of Secretary Tata's caliber, one of the most qualified cabinet secretaries, I'm sure, in the history of the state. That's not an exaggeration. Former Brigadier General, um, uh, uh, two master's degrees, won the Bronze Star, uh, dedicated his life to, to, to public service. Fortunate to have him in the cabinet for as long as we did. But the, the bond effort is, is on track. The, I, I think the, the House will introduce legislation here in the next few days. The list won't look exactly like what the governor proposed, but that's, uh, we always knew that would be the case. We never said that, that our list was a take it or leave it list. I think there's, uh, there's a, a sense in the General Assembly that the, this kind of investment is overdue. It's been 15 years, Henry, since our last general obligation bond issue, and we've added 2 million people in population across the state since then. And that's only going to continue. That growth is only going to uh, continue in the future. So we have a responsibility to invest in infrastructure, especially right now while interest rates are at historic lows, to meet the demands of, of our fast-growing state. Yeah. And I, I think the General Assembly recognizes that. Nothing happens with a legislature as fast as, as some folks would like. Their natural inclination is to is to deliberate and debate and discuss, and, <laughs> and that's true for any legislature, not just this one. So and vacation they, and go to meetings? and. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could probably go back to the Roman Senate and, and find um, uh, a, a, an inclination to, to spend time debating and discussing. And, and so um, they're, they're working on it, and, and we're confident that they'll, they'll move forward with the Interesting. Proposal. We'll be looking forward to seeing what the uh, bill looks like in the House. I know the governor said that a couple weeks ago that he's expecting the House to introduce a bill, so we'll see what happens and, uh, and see if the Senate will warm up to the idea. I think it's a great idea. I, I talk a little bit about if the bond were to pass, what kind of stuff would we see happening in eastern North Carolina to help the economy uh, right here where we live, Lee? Well, so you'll see a significant investment in, uh, in the UNC and the community college system. So that includes East Carolina University, includes Elizabeth City State, uh, UNC Pembroke, Fayetteville State University, uh, UNC Wilmington, all would receive um, funds for capital projects under this bond proposal. And every one of the 58 community colleges in the state, including those in eastern North Carolina, would, would receive funds for capital construction and capital improvements. I think the, the, the House bill is likely to include some funds for K-12 through school construction also, uh, in addition to uh, some road programs. And uh, in, in the East, turning 17 into a four-lane controlled access road from the, North, uh, from the South Carolina border to the Virginia border has been a long-held goal. Of, uh, of the state and of DOT, and, and I think you'll see funds for that in, uh, in the House bill as well. So uh, a lot of overdue infrastructure investments. It's time, to, it's time to go ahead and take advantage of our AAA credit rating and historically low interest rates and invest for the future. Don't think there's any better time to do it than right now. So, um, you know, I've, I've been on board with this idea from the beginning. I think it's a great idea. And, uh, you know, it, it, we need to say, again, two things for people who don't really uh, follow this. There hasn't been any significant uh, repair and, and, uh, and, and construction money spent on university campuses in probably 15 years. And, I mean, we've got buildings in disrepair that are going to fall down if we don't do something about it. That's the first thing. And the second thing, this is all can be done, and, and not one tax would be raised to do it, Lee. So that's, the, that's when you need to do it. When you, you, know, you do it when you're able to do it and not have to raise taxes. Don't wait until you're in a situation where you have to do it, and you're in, then you've got to raise taxes to do it. That's exactly right. We're paying down our existing debt very quickly, so we have ample – debt capacity. It does not require raising taxes. Sometimes people wonder how you can borrow uh, what, what by any measure is a bunch of money and not raise taxes. And the answer is that we're paying off our existing debt so, so quickly. And you're right about the need, particularly when it comes to training the workforce of the future. You know, you can probably teach English in the same building for, 
50 or 60 years, but you can't teach science, technology, engineering, these critical skills in outdated facilities. We've been to a lot of these facilities mm-hmm. around the state, and they're really, uh, they're really outdated and in some cases dangerous. So North, Car- North Carolina is behind. I mean, we're, we're behind other states in that. Uh, I mean, if we're going to be – I mean, I know that, um, you know, some of, the, some of the other states that consider themselves a um, uh, high uh, output of technology and science – way ahead of us on some of these things so you know i i agree with you on that hey one last thing if you got you got another minute i do um the the question about incentive plans uh you know this has been another political hot potato in raleigh and the question about whether or not uh, the state should be in the business of recruiting industry into certain areas, and eastern North Carolina would certainly be one of them. We just lost the Volvo deal to South Carolina. There is, um, you know, there, there's every reason to believe that there are a couple of other auto manufacturers now looking uh, in North Carolina, including that site that uh, we want to see them locate in right here, not far from Greenville in Edgecombe County. Um, but still, no incentive package from the General Assembly. The, um, the the Senate doesn't seem willing to go along with this. Where is that going to go in the next few weeks? Well, you're right. It's long past time for the General Assembly to reauthorize our incentive program. Nobody likes incentives philosophically. I think in a perfect world, we all wish we didn't have to have them. Um, and, and we have a much more transparent, much smaller uh, incentive program than most of the state's that we compete with. But we can't tie our hands behind our back and just say we're not going to use them. You just flat out won't even be in the discussion for a new auto manufacturing plant or a lot of these other large corporate relocations that pay good wages for good jobs without a robust incentives program. So it is time for the General Assembly to go ahead and and reauthorize that. I think it's gotten tied up in the rest of the budget negotiations, which is unfortunate because it takes the governor and and our Commerce Secretary and all the other folks who are out there trying to bring jobs to North Carolina off the field in, uh, in, in these critical job recruitment yeah. discussions. Um, when do you think we'll have a budget? You're hoping by August 15th? There's plenty of time to do it by then, and, and I hope and believe that we'll, uh, we'll all pull together and get it done by then. All right. Will you, will you have a place at that table when, they, when, when the House and the Senate conferees really get down to the, uh, to, to the nuts and bolts? We work hard at trying to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the governor's perspective is represented. We, we do a lot of work in preparing the governor's budget. We have all the information from the agencies, and, and, uh, and, and, and so, yes, we, um, we, we, we try to make sure that that, that perspective is there. Lee Roberts, the uh, state budget director. Lee, it's great to hear from you, and I appreciate you taking the time to be on with us this morning. Thanks for all, thanks for all you do for us. Thank you very much for having me. All right, talk to you soon. Lee Roberts.